So they basically want us here to derive the mortgage or the loans formula from our log tables. Uh, it's basically going to use the use of geometric series once again. So there's a bit of work involved in it. Uh, first of all, just to be clear with what all these letters mean, um, we have our A, we have a P, so just let's write down what these letters are meaning. So my A is going to stand for the repayment. My P is standing for the loan amount or mortgage. My I stands for interest rate. And T stands for time. Now that could be years, months, we don't know. This is just deriving the formula. So what a, it tells us that basically, and that's how your typical exam question would look. So what we need to do here is, first of all, we are going to list out uh, a geometric series. So if I was looking at my loan repayments here, so I have the sum of my loans, I'm going to call that P according to this particular question. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting up my repayment and that is A, and I'm dividing it by 1 plus I, so 1 plus my interest rate. My next installment is going to be my repayment, A, and it again is divided now by 1 plus I to the power of T, uh, or not T, sorry, 2 I should say, and we continue that uh, sequence on, so it's now going to be to the power of 1 and then 2, and then I'm going to do repayment which is A all over one plus I to the power of three and so on and so on and so on and so on until my final repayment, which is going to be to the power of T, some unknown year or month. So you can see now that we've basically set up a sequence and I'm going to use now from my log tables, the sum of my finite geometric series so I'm going to page 22 now in my log tables and from page 22, as I said, I'm using the formula SN is equal to A times one minus R to the power of N divided by one minus R. So this formula is for the sum of a finite uh, geometric series, finite meaning it ends basically, it finishes at time T. And now let's just fill in what we know. We know that our A is going to be our first term uh, which is repayment over one plus I. Now I'm just going to call that A for repayment, one plus I. And my R is my common ratio of what it's going up in. So basically what you're doing is you're taking any term, so TN plus one and dividing it by the term in front of it. So in other words, if I take like uh, term three, A over one plus I to the power of three, and I divide that by the term in front of it, which is A over one plus i to the power of two, when I divide them out, I will get one over one plus i. So in other words, it's going up by a fraction, one over one plus i. Because in order to get from a to a, you're not doing anything, you're just multiplying it by one. And to get from one plus i to one plus i squared, you need to multiply it by one plus i. So my value for r here is one over one plus i, and my value for a is a over one plus i. And now we just need to fill in our formula. And there's going to be a little bit of use here of um, some complicated, I suppose, algebraic manipulation and so on. So let's write down everything we know. So let's fill in our formula here. So the sum of the term, now the sum of the terms is going to be my loan repayment. So I'm now going to change SN to P. That's the sum of the loan. And I'm going to sub in my A, which is going to be uh, A over one plus I, that's my A. And I'm going to use a lot of brackets here. Um, and now I'm going to multiply it by one minus my R, which is one over one plus I. And that is all to the power of T. Again, I'm just filling in exactly as per the formula. Then I'm closing that bracket and I'm dividing all of this by one minus R, which is one minus one over one plus I. Okay, so that's our first step. I've basically just filled in my formula. Next thing I'm going to do now is, I'm going to try and get rid of this uh, one plus i on the bottom. So see here I have on the 
num or the denominator, I have a fraction and I have a one plus i in the bottom. So I'm going to try and eliminate that one plus i. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically multiply this fraction, top and bottom, by one plus i over one plus i. So I'm multiplying top by one plus i and bottom by one plus i. And we know from basic fractions that we can do that because one plus i divided by one plus i is one. So I'm basically just multiplying this fraction by one. That's all I'm doing here, really. And let's set up what that will look like now. So my uh, new loan repayment is gonna be payment is equal to, and I'm now gonna multiply this by one plus i on the top. And it's been multiplied now by a over one plus i times my one minus one over one plus i all to the power of t, close my bracket. And on the bottom of my fraction, I'm also multiplying it by one plus i because if I do it to the top, I must do it to the bottom. I have to keep it uh, equivalent. And I'm multiplying that then by uh, one minus one over one plus i. And now I'm just gonna multiply in that one uh, plus i. So what does that give me now? Um, so on the top, you can see here, hopefully that this one plus i is now gonna cancel with this one plus i that's over the, or beneath the a. So on the top line or the numerator, I'm gonna have uh, loan is equal to a times one minus one over one plus i to the power of t. So that one plus i and the one plus i will cancel. On the bottom now, I need to multiply in this one plus i into the bracket. So I need to multiply it by both terms. So the one plus i multiplied by the one is giving me one plus i. And then when I multiply the one plus i by the one over one plus i, the one plus i in the bottom will cancel with the one plus i in the top. So that will just give me minus one. Now, just to be clear, just to maybe stop for a second, just make sure that on the top, you only have to multiply the one plus i into the first uh, bracket because it's like, let's say something simple like this, two multiplied by x multiplied by uh, four. You only need to multiply the two into one of the values, whether it's the two or the four, you don't need to multiply it into both of them. So like this here would become uh, 8x. I've multiplied the two by the four and then multiplied that eight by the x. That's basically what I did over here on the top of this fraction. I only had to multiply it into one of the terms. Let's see now, can we tidy that up a little bit more? On the bottom of my fraction, I now have uh, one plus i minus one. Well, those ones will cancel. One take away one is zero. So I now have loan is equal to a times one minus one over one plus i to the power of t all over my i. And all I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna multiply both sides by i. I wanna eliminate this fraction, or in other words, basically, I'm cross multiplying. So if you're used to cross multiplying, you put the p over one and cross multiply, or multiply both sides by i, basically, is what you're doing here. So that becomes pi, or ip, whatever way you want to call it, is equal to one multiplied by this, just stays as a, times one minus one over one plus i, all to the power of t. So we've got rid of part of our fraction. Next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my log tables now to deal with this power of t here. So I'm going to page 21 on my log tables and you can see in your log tables on page 21 that if you have a power to the top and the bottom uh, to a whole fraction, it's the same as putting the power to the top and the bottom. So follow that rule from your log tables here. So pi is now going to be the same as a times one minus one to the power of t over one plus i to the power of t. So that rule is coming there from log, log tables page 21. And one to the power of anything is just one. So one to the power of five is one, one to the power of 105 is one, one to the power of t is just one. So IP or PI is equal to A times one minus one over one plus I to the power of T. So we've dealt with our power there. Um, next thing I want to do now is come back into the bracket and you can see now that we have one minus one over one plus I to the power of T. So what I want to do here is I want to basically make this one uh, a fraction so I can add or subtract 
these two together. So I want to basically make these a single fraction. So what I'm doing here basically is it's like I have one over one and I now need to change that into an equivalent fraction. So our equivalent fraction will be pi is equal to a times now think about this, 1 over 1 is the same as me writing it as 1 plus i to the power of t over 1 plus i to the power of t. Because remember that 1 plus i to the power of t divided by 1 plus i to the power of t gets me back to 1. And the reason why I'm changing it is that I can now subtract this fraction which has the same denominator of 1 plus i to the power of t. That was the reason for that. And I can now rewrite inside the bracket as a times and now I can combine these fractions I can write them as a single fraction 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1 all over 1 plus i to the power of t so I've made it a single fraction okay next step now is that I am just going to basically remove this overall bracket uh, so I'm basically going to just multiply in my a so this becomes pi is equal to, and I'm just going to basically multiply in the a. I'm not actually going to multiply it in, I'm just removing the bracket. So I can write it as a times 1 plus i uh, to the power of t minus 1 all over 1 plus i to the power of t. And the reason for that now is you can see here that if I, if I put that pi over 1, I can now eliminate the, that denominator of 1 plus i to the power of t. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply across by 1 plus i to the power of t. So if I do it to the left hand side, I must do it to the right hand side. Or if you're more used to it, we use our cross multiplication. So that's now going to become uh, pi times 1 plus i to the power of t is equal to a times 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1. Again, maybe just scroll back up to the start of the video and have a look at the formula that we're trying to work to. You can see that we're practically there. We want our formula to be a is equal to. So all I have to do here now in order to get a in its own is divide across by that 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1. So that means that a is equal to pi 1 plus i to the power of t all over. And as I said, we're dividing across by 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1. So we're dividing both sides by that. And again, look at the question at the start. We're very close to it. All we have to do now is factorize out that p. And if it helps, think of a, an example like this, like um, 2x over uh, y. That's the same as I can factorize out that 2 to become 2 times x over y. That's the same thing because 2 over 1, top by top, bottom by bottom, gets me back to 2x over y. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to factorize out that p. So if I factorize out that p, it becomes p times 1, or sorry, i times 1 plus i to the power of t all over, but I'm not putting the p as part of the fraction because that's the way they wanted the formula to be written. Minus 1 is equal to a. And if we come back now and look at our formula at the start of the question, uh, that is the way they wanted the question to be written. Um, they've just uh, put it in, in the alternative order. You can also have it as a is equal to uh, p times i uh, 1 plus i to the power of t over 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1. Okay, so that is the uh, deriving of our formula for the loans and mortgages. Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.